We're now on item 13. This is our first reading. We'll make sure that we invite the public up. And this is an ordinance amending uh, chapter of the Marin County Code to eliminate an exception for owner-occupied structures from the county's fair housing ordinance providing source of income protections for recipients of third-party rental assistance. And here you are. Thank you. Good morning, board members. Lily Thomas with the Marin County <coughs> Community Development Agency. And um, Debbie LaRue of our staff will be giving the presentation. Good morning, Debbie LaRue, Community Development Agency. So in October and November of last year, your board held two public hearings and elected to adopt the fair, this fair housing ordinance to establish source of income protections and increase affordable housing options. The intent of this ordinance is to remove limitations in the provision of rental housing for families and veterans who receive third party assistance. Based on community feedback and comment, your board directed staff to return with this proposal to eliminate exceptions for owner-occupied structures. Uh, given, that our sorry, given that our housing stock is predominantly single family, and considering the county's prioritization of a strategy to fulfill the count. Sorry, to fulfill the county's requirements for housing available to low and moderate income households through the development of second units and room rentals, the elimination of this exception is a great way to support the county's fair housing goals and also support the Section 8 program. This ordinance applies to the, unincor uh, sorry, the unincorporated portion of the county, and it does not ask that anyone automatically rent to a voucher holder, only that recipients of third-party rental assistance be considered on equal footing as other tenants or prospective tenants. Uh, we recommend that your board elect to, to sorry, we recommend that your board elect to hold a first reading of this ordinance, and we are happy to answer any questions. Okay, first, any questions from board members? Okay, anyone from the public want to comment on this? All right, I'm going to bring it back. Thank you for the, uh -huh. yes, please. Good morning, board. Um, my name is Frances Nunez, and I am a um, resident of the unincorporated area of Santa Benicia. Um, I have had experience for many, many years in San Francisco and Oakland um, with Section 8 as a property manager. Um, and I believe that Section 8 uh, should be voluntary because it is complement, oh, sorry, uh, complicated and cumbersome. And um, this ordinance that you're passing does expose property owners to significant criminal and civil um, liability. So I think many small property owners are likely to choose selling their properties over being forced into some kind of program like this. So I think it will actually not help <laughs> the situation. but. That this exception that I really feel strongly about is um, that um, owner-occupied um, homeowners who are basically getting a roommate should not have to deal with this. Um, I'm sure you know that the county of Santa Clara just last week finalized the same type of ordinance. And their ordinance is a little different because they have an exception. And the exception is for any unit that is occupied by the owner or members of his or her family and has no more than a single roomer or boarder. The Santa Clara staff um, actually mentioned that um, the other ordinance already enacted in California were East Palo Alto, San Francisco, and Marin. So they were um, very much aware. Um, and I would just like to say that um, Supervisor Sears mentioned fairness um, when she was talking about this ordinance. And I really think that fairness is the whole issue when it comes to only um, requiring property owners in the unincorporated areas to deal with this while the, all the cities like Sausalito and San, um, San Rafael and Novato, et cetera, um, they're not <coughs> required um, to have the same kind of um, obligation. So um, I just would like to, I'm going to write you a letter, and I believe this is kind of like adding it to a protected class. 
having Section 8 be added to that, you know, like fair housing um, uh, requirements for protected classes. And if you look at all the um, state um, and federal ordinances, um, I don't think you, I would like to know if there's any, first of all, the state and federal don't require Section 8 to be um, in, included as a protected class, kind of. And even their other, their protected classes are, have exceptions for um, single family, um, I mean, uh, owner occupied you units. Wrap it up. So I, I would like to know if the staff can, can um, uh, or if you can tell me of any other jurisdiction that has this requirement. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public would like to speak to this? Mm -hmm. I'm let me add something to if I can. Sure. Go ahead. I was going to ask Dad to respond to her. Great, Super. I think that's a great idea. And I think while you are responding, uh, you know, it, it's been a, a source of confusion, I think, for, for many folks throughout our various conversations on um, different things we've considered. Uh, and the confusion really is whether we are obligating someone to rent to a Section 8 voucher holder or not and so if you could um, explain that again that really there's no there's not this is not a requirement that you take on a renter of any sort so it'd be helpful to include mm -hmm. the, the uh, explanations that you provided before right. in your response I think. so um, <coughs> to respond to that portion of it you're exactly correct what this ordinance um, that you've already adopted and that it is in effect what it does is it requires that a landlord consider um, a renter um, who has Section 8 in the same way that they would consider somebody who doesn't and so that they would review their um, references, their rental history, et cetera, in the same way that somebody who did not have Section 8 was considered. Um, and so to it's not, it is not required. No. no, and just to add on to that, I think, I'm sorry to interrupt mm -hmm. you, Lily. I know mm -hmm. you have more to say, but I, I think in any situation with an owner-occupied residence, the, the, uh, the owner is going to be very carefully yeah. considering different applicants. Obviously, that's kind right. of a heightened level mm -hmm. of concern when you're living with someone, and, and nothing in this ordinance right. changes the ability to make sure you're renting to someone who you feel is going to be a good person to be living with. Yes, that's correct. And current, you know, under current law, <laughs> anyone who rents more than one of their um, one room in their home is required to um, comply with all fair housing laws and regulations, and so this this would not change that. It's it's consistent with that. Uh, um, also, to her point about um, a similar ordinance in cities and towns, of course, we don't have jurisdiction within those cities and towns, but we are um, working through the priority setting committee um, and with um, President Arnold to outreach to cities and towns. We plan to send them a letter showing like this is the ordinance that we've done and we're encouraging you to do something similar um, to further our um, affirmatively furthering fair housing work that we're required to do under HUD. So we will be doing that outreach. Thank you, Lily. All right, any questions from the Yes, Supervisor Conley. Yeah, maybe just to provide a little more context, as was noted, this is really a follow-on to a much larger conversation we had <coughs> around um, <coughs> sorts of income discrimination, where we heard extensively from landlords, from tenants. Uh, we had a very uh, robust public hearing on it. Um, this issue was flagged as we went forward with the um, uh, non-discrimination ordinance that we adopted um, a while back to consider this issue. Um, if we're going to um, uh, tackle this particular problem, and I think it's been summed up well here, it's not requiring anyone to rent to anyone beyond the fact that the problem we were seeing is people were literally advertising no Section 8. Um, so um, I think it was a sense of the board and, and frankly the sense of um, many landlords and tenants that we heard from that, that it should apply in this uh, situation as well. Uh, a prospective landlord looking to open up their uh, rooms for rent 
could still run credit checks, could still um, evaluate references, could size up the person uh, eye to eye um, as, whether, as to whether they would be um, someone that they would feel um, uh, is a person to uh, rent their space to. That doesn't change as a result of this. Um, as Lily mentioned, we can only address unincorporated. Um, I know we are getting inquiries from incorporated jurisdictions within uh, Moran as to our decision making, as well as jurisdictions outside of Moran who are, who are interested in this as we tackle a menu of options to address the affordable housing crisis uh, that we're all facing. So I thought it was important to kind of harken back to that landscape as to how this particular piece uh, came together. Yes, can thank I you. Yeah. Go ahead. And, and, and then I, I see you, and I'll call on you after the board has their comments. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I just want to, and I appreciate the broader context and background, Damon. I think that is important. And I also think to the, to the landlord community, um, I, I think it's important generally that I, I think there's a a lack of awareness of how significant a barrier that is when and how many how many folks uh, out in the running community were basically screening out right from the top section 8 uh, voucher holders who are uh, perfectly decent good people normal folks and um, who only, who have a different source of income and um, I think that maybe globally folks didn't recognize how many units were being ex were being uh, taken off the market for that pool of community members. So I really see this just as sort of leveling the playing field for, um, for all folks looking for housing out there that landlords consider all financially viable applicants and Section 8 voucher holders are certainly financially viable and maybe may have are more secure on the income stream and then many others so and also want to say the work that's been done by the housing authority um, to really broaden the the and do outreach and support landlords has been exemplary um, it's a great program um, the folks who are voucher holders have have folks who work with them I think landlords should be considering participating in the program if they have not so far you're talking about the landlord partnership yeah, program yeah. which this dovetails with Anyway. Supervisor yeah. and, and I'm very supportive of this. Thank you for bringing it forward. Uh, one request I have, um, could we have an update of the February 9, 2016, three phases of this plan at some point in the future? Yes. Thank yeah. you. Anyone else? All right, yes, uh, Dave, would you like to make a comment <coughs> to the public? Thank you very much. You, you don't want to miss an opportunity for me to thank you. Mm -hmm. um, or to thank staff for this um, ordinance. It's, uh, it's needed and I think it's very appropriate. And to the uh, next landlord, um, let me just express that I've had, I'm a landlord too, I've had mixed results uh, with Section 8, but I've also had <coughs> mixed results with other renters. And um, in fact, I've had to, I've never had to um, evict a Section 8 person, but I have had to evict someone who was not on Section 8. Um, it, and I have to say that my experience with Section 8 was when I was um, a freshman landlord. And so I think the ability to sort through applicants um, is the responsibility of the landlord. And I think being able to advertise segregation uh, is not supportive of fair housing access. Uh, and I hope, as Lily mentioned, not only through uh, the priority setting committee, but also through uh, the county's assessment of fair housing, that impediments like this will be addressed countywide. And I agree with the uh, woman who spoke that it could be uh, a good ordinance for San Rafael and Novato and San Anselmo and all the other cities to, to adopt. So I fully support this. Uh, the only 
Um, ask I would have is at some point uh, you establish, I've come across and I've sent to you some of the examples of um, Craigslist ad that still specifies Section 8, uh, some within, some outside of the unincorporated area. Uh, my understanding is that there's an informal relationship with Legal Aid of Marin to do an enforcement and education. It would be good to uh, launch uh, a, a formal effort, a funded effort at education and enforcement in that. If I can read the Craigslist ads, so can somebody else. And uh, I, I'll keep doing that, but I would think you would want something more constructive in terms of being able to promote this policy. So in closing, thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> All right, this is motion is for the first reading of the ordinance. Do I have I'll a move. motion? And do I have a second? Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 In ordinance of the Marin County Board of Supervisors amending section 5.53.010 of the Marin County Code, Title V. Okay, all those in favor? Oh, we, oh, we did that. Okay, great. Right, is it 11 o'clock? It is. It is. Yes, we made it. <laughs>